So we're going to create this beautiful artwork image, this beautiful animation using React 3 Fiber and Perlin Noise. Why React 3 Fiber? It's less code. It's simpler than vanilla 3JS. Perlin Noise creates these beautiful natural organic patterns. You can get started by visiting my GitHub and downloading the start branch. Okay, now that's a little more. There you go, there's some points. Now they're my... What? It's about by two. <gasps> Look at that. Pretty cool effect, I'd say. Once you do that and CD into that project, you'll just type yarn, which is to install the dependencies, and then you'll type yarn dev to get started. Uh, get status will tell you what's happening. Um, I'm on the wrong branch. Get checkout start. Whoops. Good. I'm going to create a new branch. So get checkout dash B for branch and the name of the new branch. Let's call it demo. Great. Yarn dev. All right. If it didn't automatically open up in your browser, you can hold down the command key and click this link to open it up in your browser. To quickly go over a couple of things, um, this icosphere is animating. Here's how it's being animated. I'm using this use frame. Let's change this icosphere to a noise grid. And this ico ref can be just plain old ref. And I want the rotation, I want that to go away. And this is now a plain, whoops, lowercase. 3JS primitives are lowercase. And mesh basic material, and it's wireframe. Let's see how that looks. Oh, looks pretty boring. What if I said args equals curly brace, square brace, and pass in the, a couple of things, the height and width, which will be, I don't know, five and five, and then the subdivisions along the height and width, and I'm gonna say 16 comma 16. Now that's a little more interesting. It's a mesh that's wireframe. I really want it to be points though. What if I just change this to points? Oh, not great. I apologize for that. Let's do points material. I guess that's better. Wireframe doesn't make sense, but size does. Size equals curly brace, curly brace, 0 0.1. Yeah, there you go. There's some points. We want to manipulate these points though, and in order to do that, I can't use this plane geometry. Instead, I'm going to use buffer geometry. Buffer geometry. Get rid of those args. And I'm going to want something inside of it. That something is a buffer attribute tag. Buffer attribute attach equals attributes position like that get rid of those well that was confusing so buffer attribute attach count array and item size so let's define quartz uh, it's going to be const quartz is an empty array actually what i want it to be is const plain geo is equal to a new three dot plane geometry and let's make it five. And this will be 32. Chords is equal to plane geo dot attributes dot position. I think now we're cooking. Three is not defined. Fair enough. Let's import three. It's already installed as a dependency. So import star as three from three. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. Now we've, we've swapped out the geometries, but let's, let's add the colors for 
let i equal zero, and then num calls is equal to chords dot count. Yeah, chords dot count. While i is less than num calls, i plus equals one. We're going to create a uh, colors array. Const colors is equal to an empty array. And let's push a bunch of colors in there. R comma G comma B. Hang on, hang on, calm down. Now, um, const R comma G comma B equals, um, I, I actually want to use a temporary guy because I don't want to create a new color every time. I'm going to use the same color, cull, and that's going to be up here. Const cull equals new three dot color. Because I don't want to create a new color inside this loop. It's a lot of going on here. 60, 32 times 32, whatever that is. Uh, great, we're setting it a, ma a random hue and full saturation and half lightness. After we've done that, I want to say plain geo dot set attribute. And we want to set the color attribute and give it a float32 array, which is that array we just created, passing the, that array we just created, and the uh, item size is three. One, two, three. Let's see how that looks. I said, let's see how that looks. It looks the same because I, I didn't tell it to use it yet. Sorry, I, I did tell it to use it. However, I didn't say I wanted to use vertex colors. So let's do that. Vertex colors like that. And it doesn't work. Boo. Let's create another buffer attribute like so. And we'll attach this to color. And we'll say colors count colors dot array. Item size equals three. Not using either of these guys. Comment them out. Save. Oh boy, there's a there's an error. <clears throat> the problem is the array type. Unsupported data buffer. Right. So it needs to be a new three dot float thir float 32 buffer attribute colors does that work oh dot array let's get rid of this refresh that works i'd like to thank exponent click the link in the description to enjoy a 20 percent discount on their subscription today Now's the time to get rid of those background sprites. Bye-bye. We're not going to need them anymore. We've got colorful stuff that was supposed to add visual interest, and now it's just creating noise. And if I refresh, I'm not loving those colors. To get better random covers, colors, set RGB. And we'll treat those as R, G, and B values. I think that's the one I like. Wow. So, if the colors are looking funky, try this. GL equals tone mapping. No tone mapping. Look, now they're much more saturated. How do you like that? I like it. All right. Now what? I could load the texture up and use that instead. Use loader. Use loader. Three dot texture loader, and then we'll load in this circle dot png already in the project. Now I can pass that as a map attribute. Sprite. So I actually need to do something different here. Can I say const sprite is equal to use loader? I don't know. Let's see if I can do that. I can do that. 
weird how that's mapped on there. It looks kind of junky. Oh, it's because of the size of the particle. Drop them down, they look better. Oh, should we add noise? So import improved noise from dot improved noise. That's right here. Isn't that great? Let's instantiate the noise before we use it. Const no noise equals new new improved noise. And now instead of randomness, red, green, and blue. That's a little more clear. Inside the use frame method, what if I were to? So GitHub Copilot knows what I've written before and it wants me to use it again, and I like it. So I'm gonna grab the, a reference to the geometry. I set up that reference up here. It needs update. Equals true. Whoa! Look at that. Hang on, I think it's depth right. And that's gonna fix those the little black corners on each one of those sprites. Depth right, false. And refresh, see the change, it didn't work. Oh, because it needs to be transparent, I think. Transparent, save, refresh. Yeah, transparent works. So this code was pretty effective. This HSL though sucks. Instead of that, I wanna pick two colors. High color is white, and the low color would be kind of a dark blue. I've chose to define them passing in floats for each, each R, G, and B channel. Now instead of set HSL, let's do lerp colors. Yeah, and let's start with a multiplier of one. Let's see how that looks. That looks nice. If we multiply it by two, we should get more contrast. By three, still more contrast. Isn't that nice? To get this animating, I wanna use this delta, uh, this current time. What is all this? What is all this up here? I don't need any of this anymore. What, what was I doing? Oh yeah, so in the use frame, the noise is being generated based on the position of these points. And I wanna animate it. So in, instead of just passing in these, the same static values each frame, I'm gonna pass in T. Uh, actually, elapsed time, like so. What is the last elapsed time? It's zero to start with. And then we increment it each frame using this delta. The delta is the time since the last frame. Is elapsed time plus equals that delta divided by two. <gasps> Look at that. I didn't expect it to work so quickly. Um, you could increase the resolution like so and drop the point size while you're at it. So we'll have, oh, oh what happened? Reload. Oh, that's so nice. It doesn't look exactly like this. So the points are a little bit bigger and the noise is behaving differently it, because GitHub Copilot shows some different values like I'm and when I'm passing in the position, I'm scaling it down a little bit. And the reason it's doing that, hang on, help me out here. Um, so I think I think that's the frequency. Let's let's see. Actually, I don't think it's. If I decrease this, I think it's going to smooth it out, and it sure does. And if I increase it. Oh boy, this is gonna be cool. It's gonna be wild. Oh, 
Look at that. It looks random because the frequency is too high. So that's the value. That's what I want to call that. That's 10 times smaller. And 0 0.5 should be pretty smooth. Yeah, that's so nice. I don't know, 0 0.9 might be nice. Let's call this uh, the frequency. Const noise frequency is equal to that value. And then we can, we can replace this with that. So it's one value. We could call this noise amplitude. If I drop that value down, it gets really smooth. Also, I'm just going to call it noise amplitude. Noise amp. And let's define that as 0 0.5 or 1.5. Let's reload it. Where the hell's my cursor? Pretty cool effect, I'd say. Just tweaking these parameters to get something interesting. 1.0, I think that's where we were. If you like this tutorial, please share it with your friends. It really helps my channel grow. Also, check out my course, Learn 3JS Basics. Available now. Thanks so much. Bye.